Thank you for that. We're in Revelation chapter 8. And uh, the first, uh, uh, let's see here, the first uh, five verses are talking about uh, fire, smoke of the incense, prayers of the saints was thrown into earth. And what we talked about a minute ago before I turned on the, uh, the recording, thank you, list was the fact that if you've ever prayed that prayer, that kingdom come be done on earth as it is in heaven, whether you know it or not, you were praying for this day of judgment. And I say that because when all of these judgments are complete, Revelation chapter 20, you'll see when we get there, says that the kingdom of God will be here on earth for 1,000 years. That's what it says. So church history, Revelation 2 and 3, the rapture, Revelation 4, and then from Revelation 6 through 19, the seven years of tribulation, after that, Revelation chapter 20, 1,000 years of peace on earth because Jesus is ruling from his throne in uh, Jerusalem. You say, well, Mario, that sounds pretty far-fetched. I know. And you say, 1,000 years is a long time. I know. And, you know, the things that the Bible says about seven years of tribulation, that is way, way out there. I know. But you know what I was thinking about as I was studying this? Uh, it reminded me of the Jews. You know, since 70 AD, the Jews had no nation. Rome had cast them out of uh, the nation of Israel, and they were scattered ar around the world. That that's why today there's Mexican Jews and Chinese Jews and Puerto Rican Jews and Brazilian Jews and Jews from all over the world because they were scattered throughout the world for 1,900 years. Well, I can tell you that for 1,900 years, during every Jewish holiday, they prayed. And at the end of every prayer, they uttered the words, and next year in Jerusalem. And next year in Jerusalem. Well, AD 71 passed and they weren't back in Jerusalem. And after that, 50 years passed and 100 years and 300 years and 800 years and 1,000 years. But then on May 14th, 1948, 1,900 years later, the Jews returned to their land. It came to pass. Well, let me tell you that one day the kingdom of God will come to earth, just like the Bible says. Until then, we will continue to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And now you know why you're praying that prayer. And now you understand God hears that prayer, but it's not time yet. The time is coming. So verse 6 says, so the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now, if you believe Jewish tradition, if you believe the Apocrypha, uh, you'll find the Apocrypha in your Catholic Bibles, but not in your uh, Protestant or, or Christian Bible, maybe I should say, because there are historical and geographical errors in the Apocrypha. And since that is the case, we know that it is not inspired by God. But there are lots of historical truths in there. Uh, talks about an, uh, angel, angel, angelology, which is the study of angels and lots of other interesting subjects. So if you believe Jewish tradition and you believe the Apocrypha, particularly the book of Enoch chapter 20, then you also believe that these seven angels that are mentioned here are the angel Michael, the angel Raphael, the angel Gabriel, Uriel, Sariel, Ragu, and Remiel. These are the seven angels that are gathered around the throne of God day and night. And according to Revelation, according to the Apocrypha, these are the angels that are going to be sounding the trumpets. And every time a trumpet is sounded, calamity comes on the earth once again. These are not the same judgments that we've been studying for the last couple of weeks that are the seven seal judgments. These are seven more on top of them. All right. So the Bible is not repeating itself here. So the first trumpet, it says, verse seven, the first angel sounded and hail and fire fall, uh, 
followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. Now, some people, they don't take the Bible literally, all right? I do. I do. When the Bible makes sense uh, in, in a literal sense, seek no other sense. And it makes all the sense here in the world. I believe this to be literal because it's God's word, number one. And number two, because it has happened before. In the book of Exodus chapter 9, when Pharaoh refused to let God's people go, when the Jews were in bondage in Egypt, Pharaoh said, I will not let them go. God sent giant hail mingled with fire on all of Egypt except for the area of Goshen. You say, well, why didn't the, the, the fire and the hail fall on the area of Goshen? Well, because that's where the Jewish people lived. Which always reminds me that when calamity falls on the earth, if you are one of God's people, don't worry about it. Things are going on. They seem out of control. And maybe where the world is concerned, they are out of control. But where God is concerned, you and I, God's people, are the apple of his eye. You say, Mario, I haven't been faithful. Hey, neither have I. Who can say that they're without sin? Nobody can say that. Who can say that they're not guilty of doing their own will rather than God's will? Nobody can say that with 100% accuracy. No, but God, our God, is loving, he's merciful, he's kind, he's gracious, and he will watch over his people always, always. So calamity could be falling on the world all around us, but God protects us. Look at verse 8. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. And a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed, something like a great mountain burning with fire. Well, I don't know, again, what this could be, but it's very possible that it could be a giant asteroid. You know, asteroids hit the earth all the time, and they, they come with such speed that they don't have to be very big to create large uh, uh, catastrophes here on, on the earth. In fact, in 2013, I, I did a little research while I was studying for this. There was this 65 foot uh, asteroid, 65 feet, not very big compared to the size of, of the earth. And it was coming to earth in the area of, uh, of Russia. And thank God it exploded uh, I think it was 60 miles above the earth, so it exploded into these small pieces. But even that asteroid had the power to destroy 7,500 buildings in the area uh, that it fell. So imagine the damage that would be caused by a giant asteroid that hits the earth directly, that doesn't explode before it hits earth, but hits the earth uh, directly. It it's going to be lots of calamity, and we don't have time to discuss it all right now, but many of you know that the Earth doesn't, it's tilted, and of course, with the gravitational pull and everything like that, an asteroid that hits, it's large enough, that comes in fast enough, hits the Earth in the right place, the Earth can shift, and then everything goes into a tailspin. In fact, many scientists uh, believe that that happened at one time uh, here on the earth. And they believe that in part because underneath the ice in Antarctica, there are giant mammals that are buried under the ice. They're preserved with the, with the ice. And there is uh, tropical vegetation in their intestines. How did that happen? Tropical vegetation doesn't grow in Antarctica. Well, they believe that an asteroid hit the earth at some point in the past, the earth shifted, and what was tropical is now the frozen uh, tundra. So I don't know if uh, this mountain burning that was thrown into the earth is an asteroid, but could very well uh, be. Now, the other thing is, according to what they call the maritime transport, these are people that uh, are always watching the oceans to see these big ocean liners and where they're going and everything like that. 
they say that at any given time, on any given day, this time that we're living in now, that there are at least 50,000 ships at sea every single day. Well, according to what we read here in Revelation chapter 8, when this event happens, in a moment, 16,000 of those ships will be destroyed. It says a third. Jesus is the one talking. John is the one writing. It says a third of the ships will be destroyed. By the way, a third of the ocean is about the entire size of the Atlantic Ocean. That's a big part of the ocean that's going to be uh, destroyed. But imagine that in a moment, 16,000 ships are destroyed. Can you imagine the shortage of food, of medicine, building uh, materials, uh, machinery, all of these things stopped within a moment. And then because of this thing that's thrown into the sea, millions upon millions of sea life is going to be destroyed. And uh, th this third of the ocean is going to turn to blood. I don't know if you've ever smelled rotting fish, but it's very bad. I would imagine diseases are going to come out of this. It's going to be bad. And it's going to happen. Jesus said it. It's going to happen. may not look like that today, but it's going to happen. Uh, verse 10. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. Very interesting name. It says a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. You know, in the original uh, language, wormwood can mean poisonous, uh, can mean bitterness, it can mean sadness, all of these things. I'm not sure uh, what kind of star uh, this is, but I can tell you that uh, wormwood is the English translation for Chernobyl. And if you're as old as I am, you remember that in 1986, in a city in Russia that I believe is in Ukraine now, uh, it's called Chernobyl. There was a nuclear power plant that experienced a meltdown, just went completely out of control. Uh, many people died. Many people were contaminated. To this day, babies are born deformed. Uh, babies born to mothers that live in or around that area. And to this day, all of the dirt within a 20-mile radius of Chernobyl, to this very day, all of the dirt and the plants and the water and all of the animals that are there uh, within a 20 mile radius are still to this day radioactive. And so uh, that name Chernobyl in English is uh, wormwood, believe it or not. Uh, so something is going to happen. I don't know if it's gonna be a nuclear disaster, but uh, the river, a third of the rivers and the fresh water is going to be contaminated uh, during the uh, seven years of tribulation, when these angels sound these trumpets. Verse 12, then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. So I don't know, this could be a nuclear winter, you know, if, uh, if, if there's a nuclear war that breaks out, and we're always on the brink of that to this very day. Russia is talking about launching nuclear weapons on Ukraine because Vladimir Putin just can't seem to win this war. And of course, the United States and its NATO allies, they say, you launch a nuclear missile, pal, we're launching them right back. And, and then China has them now. And China says, we're taking Taiwan and the United States. And NATO says, well, you better not. And it seems that we're just right on the cusp of a nuclear war, uh, you know, so often. Uh, these days. So I don't know, it could be a nuclear winter uh, or could be an eclipse, maybe an, an eclipse with the moon and the sun, you know, the moon, I should say, blocking the sun. Or in the United States, uh, not too long ago, we had a volcano erupt in Washington. Darcy's with us. She lives in Washington. And uh, the name of, of that was Mount St. Helen. I remember Mount St. Helen erupted and for many, many hundreds and hundreds of miles, the ash from the volcano just darkened that portion of the earth because the, the sun rays couldn't get, uh, couldn't get through that. And so there's you know, lots of reasons why the earth can become dark. 
it happens. It happens during the seven years of tribulation. These are huge catastrophic events. If, if, if you were in America during 9-11, uh, 19 Arab men went into the Twin Towers with two jets and America was, gave, gave all of that its full attention, even the whole world. Can you imagine when these things happen? And they're going to happen. These things are going to take place on earth. Listen, either that or Jesus is a liar. One or the other. There's no shade of gray here. It's black or it's white. Verse 13. And I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. So these are called the woe judgments because these are the last three trumpets that are going to be worse than the first four trumpets because these will be demonic. So not in chapter 9, but I believe at the end of chapter 10, we're going to see this uh, again. There's a pause between the sixth and the seventh. I, I don't understand why that is, but it's, it's very obvious as we study the book of Revelation. But we're going to see that those last three trumpets are demonic uh, for sure. Now, listen, if you're a Christian, you say, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. I, I mean, uh, what will I do? You don't have to do anything. You're not going to be here. All right. If you're walking with the Lord, if the Bible is your thing, if you have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, if he resides inside of you. If the Holy Spirit convicts you every time you sin, if you love the word of God, this is all evidence that you belong to the Lord, that you are the apple of his eye, that you are not appointed to wrath, Paul says in the Bible. You and I are not appointed to wrath. This does not apply to you. You're not going to be here when these things happen, okay? It says here that the woes are for the inhabitants of the earth, verse 13. Who are these people? These are earth dwellers. Okay, These are people who make the earth their home. We talked about this in Revelation chapter 6, verse 10. Remember that? This is a very important term in, in the book of Revelation. It's mentioned nine times. Actually, more than that. If you number uh, earth if you number every time the book of revelation uh, talks about earth dwellers and inhabitants of the earth it's probably close to 12 or 14 times uh and again this is jesus speaking to john he told john to write these things down so listen jesus is either a liar or he is who he says he is he said these things so inhabitants of the world earth dwellers these are people that are opposite of what the Bible calls citizens of heaven. In the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, uh, Paul wrote this letter and he said, Hey, remember, we are citizens of heaven. We are not of this world. Well, these inhabitants of the world, these earth dwellers, they live for the things of the world. They, they look for joy. They look for satisfaction in the world. All of their goals are attached to this world. Now, now somebody in recovery would say, you know, Mario, my goal is to, to be clean if they're an NA, to be sober if they're an AA. For 15 years, for 20 years, for 30 years, that's great. That's wonderful. Those are great goals to have. My goal is to work hard and to earn a nice home. My goal is to make sure that my children go to college. My goal is, you know, all of these things. No problem with that. But if that is where your hope lies, if that is what your plan for, for satisfaction is concerned, and that's all you got. Listen, you may want to rethink those things, all right? Um, because, you know, chances are that puts you into the category of inhabitants of the world or, or earth dwellers, see? You know, the problem with earth dwellers, the inhabitants of the world, is that their sights uh, are set wrong. You know a sight, right? You have a bow and arrow. You have a, a, a rifle. It's got a scope on it. It's got the crosshairs. And you, the, you set your sight on, on, on the target, right? Um, they have their sight set wrong. You know, sin. Sin is an interesting word. Uh, sin is actually an old archery term. 
that means to miss the mark, okay? So the archers would shoot the bow. There'd be a judge standing way at the other end. You got the bulls on. You launch, but you don't hit the center. And then the guy down at the end, he would say, sin, you missed the mark. That's what sin means. It means to miss the mark. Well, we all sin, all of us. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. I don't care what your deal is. We all sin. Billy Graham sin. Chuck Smith sin. Charles Spurgeon sin. I sin. You sin. We sin in thought. We sin in word. We sin in deed. We all sin. But the difference between the earth dwellers, the inhabitants of the earth, and the citizens of heaven is the direction of their sights. That's the only difference. So what am I saying? To raise your sights to heaven. That's all. Set your telescope, right? Point the arrow in a different direction. Set your sights on heaven. What, what do you mean by that? Well, draw close to the Lord through his word, not just according to your own understanding and a lot of the garbage is thrown around today. Okay? No, that's not going to get you anywhere because your mind, especially if you're in recovery, you already admitted your mind is broken. Why would you rely on that to create a God, a God of your own understanding? That, does, that doesn't make sense to me. No, what you want to do is raise your sights to heaven by drawing close to the Lord. And how do you do that? Through his word. And when you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to start living for the things that really matter. These are eternal things. You know, it's interesting. When we get to the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 4, that's again in the middle of the seven years of, uh, of tribulation, there's going to be a voice from heaven, Jesus said. And it's going to shout out, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive her plagues now these are the people that never got raptured they were left behind they're suffering all these calamities they can give their life to christ but it'll come as a, at a great price first of all they can't accept the mark of the beast we'll talk about that when we get to revelation chapter 13 and because they're not going to be going with the flow of the world they will be beheaded that's the Antichrist government that's going to be set up. That's what they're going to do. You'll see when we get there in the book of Revelation. True story. The good news is this. If you're on the fence, um, maybe you're in recovery and you're you know, looking at the second and third step, you don't have to wait for that day to come. You can receive Christ now. And by doing so, you will come out of the world. What do you mean, Mario? You mean I'm going to be taken to heaven now? Well, in a sense, your mind will, your heart will. It'll be the, be the beginning of your transformation. And when the rapture comes, yes, you will be taken out of this place. Jesus promises that. And again, you know, if you doubt that, if you wonder, I don't know if that could be. I mean, maybe, maybe not. If you're wrestling with all of these things, ask yourself one specific question. Is Jesus a liar or is Jesus the person he said he is? And if he is the person that he says he is, and there's so much evidence for this, then he means what he says and he says what he means. And now is the day of salvation because tomorrow, the Bible says, is promised to no one. Maybe that's not you. Maybe you receive Christ. You're growing in Christ. You love the word. You attend church. You serve in the church. You're all about the future of heaven. That's good. But I'll bet you, like me, run into people every day whose focus is on the temporary things of the world. Maybe you have close friends. Maybe you have family members. Maybe there's people that you're sponsoring if you're in a 12-step program. Maybe there's people who sponsor you. Listen, pray for them and ask the Lord for an open door to start the conversation because these things are going to happen. The rapture is going to come. Many people are going to be left behind and it's too late. It's too late. It's too late to give their life to the Lord the way we have the opportunity to do it today. So uh, next week, 
join us again. We're going to be in Revelation chapter 9 and chapter 10 and this little book. And Jesus tells John to eat the book. What is that about? And these two witnesses, who are they? Some say Moses, some say Enoch, some say Elijah. What is their message? Very interesting couple of guys there. Um, so we have the opportunity by God's grace to look clearly into the future, to see what the future holds, and also to enjoy and to celebrate the promises that we have in the Lord. You know, sometimes I'm bothered uh, by these Bible studies because I, I understand that I turn a lot of people off by uh, sharing these truths that are in the Bible. I say, oh, Mario's doom and gloom. Listen, this world is doom and gloom. It's a temporary place that offers empty promises. And it's my intention to wake people up with the word of God. To say, listen, now is the time for salvation. You're moving in the wrong direction. And I know all about it. I did it for years. I did it for years. And so if I'm going to make enemies or, you know, people are going to talk poorly about me for doing that, let it be. Let it be. It doesn't, doesn't, uh, it bothers me, but it's not going to stop me. And, and I pray the same for you as well. Well, with that said, let's go ahead and we're going to close with a word of prayer. And then we're going to go to those who uh, joined us on, on Zoom for questions and comments. And sometimes they bring up a lot of other interesting uh, scriptures that run parallel with what we talked about. Uh, and sometimes I get corrected. We'll see what happens today. Father, thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace. Thank you for family, Lord. And Father, as many of us uh, who are here on Zoom and on Facebook, we have family members who say, no, the Bible's not true. And the whole Jesus thing is a myth. Or, you know, I, I don't know if he actually meant everything that he said or, or whatever. Father, we pray for them now that you would bring people into their circle to have these important conversations, that you would allow circumstances in their life to point them in your direction, that they would be saved, Father, because the things you describe in the book of Revelation are very real, and they are coming soon. May we be ready. May we be ready. And if there's anything in our lives that hinder our relationship with you. Lord, we ask that you would remove those things so that we could see you clearly, so that our relationship with you would be uh, unhindered, Father, that there would be no obstacles there. Thank you for your word, Father. And I pray that these would join us again next Saturday as we get into Revelation chapter 9 and 10. We meet here, Lord, on Saturdays. We take this time because we do love you. And this is evidence of that. Lord, we pray that you would increase our love for you as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, you guys in Sweden, you guys in England, enjoy your evening. The rest of us here in the United States will enjoy our afternoon and our evening later on. God bless you, and I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye. All right. We'll end our... Facebook live session there. This was a little unorthodox for me. I learned that I could split the screen and have my notes on one side and Zoom on the other side. So if I seemed a little uh, perplexed this morning, that's, uh, that's why this is new for me. But anyway, with that said, some of you have a question. Some of you have comments. Some of you, uh, the Lord brought other scriptures to mind. Uh, why don't you share those with us if you'd like? Ash, good morning. Good evening to you, I should say. Yeah, good evening over here, Ross. Mary, yeah, yeah, but um, no, bless you. No, I just, just want to come and say thank you. I haven't caught up on last week yet because I was away, and uh, I must catch up on that because it's been very interesting stuff you're saying. Something I've learned out in the UK recently this week as well, that um, the, the Archbishop of Canterbury, where he's, they're trying to change the Lord's Prayer to suit and accommodate people now. You know, it's, it's going it's going further and further. You know, it doesn't surprise me actually anymore. It's like, okay, well. Sorry to That's interrupt good. really quick, but Dad, do you want to stop recording? Sorry, Ash. No, 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 no.